so in the middle right now? There. Okay. Yeah. Just gotta do it. All right, sorry. Um, okay, so yeah, we um, we decided to uh, write a song about in the heart of the sea, um, and to be congruous with the overall feel and the tone of the book, uh, the, our song is called. Uh, in the Heart of the Sea, the Comedy of the Whale Ship Essex. Um, written in traditional uh, sea shanty format. Yes. Um, and yeah, and so it's, it's kind of kind of like a summary. Yeah. Right. Um, and the words go by kind of fast, so we'll try our best here. Um, yeah, let's see what we're about, like... Um, <laughs> well, the Essex, she was a lucky ship, a captain by George Pollard. But when she left port for a journey of sorts, she never could have reckoned what followed. She was a whaling ship about 85 feet with a crew that numbered 20. She was heading on around to the offshore ground, a whaling land of plenty. Four days in, just past Cape Cod, they were faced with an oncoming gale. They tried to turn around, but they got knocked down, because they never shortened sail. It's only a minor setback, father had said to chase, and if we press on through, we'll be right back in the race. <laughs> South American coast, the watch shouted, there she blows, and right to the end, the beast harpooned, and the blood and oil did flow, their eyes looked rabid as they tore apart the flesh and laid it out to dry, and not a one of them frowned as they boiled it down, and smoke rolled up to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> they finally sailed to the offshore ground, and they thought they were in luck, though there was no doubt when they saw the first cloud, it would soon become a cluster. Problem. <laughs> Chase said he tried to repair his scrap while the other boat stayed on the hunt. His eyes grew wide as he gazed port side and was met with a whale's full brunt. When the puller pulled up in his own little launch, he could see that Chase was pale. He asked, My God, Mr. Chase, what is the matter? To which Chase responded, We've been stole by a whale. <laughs> Only a minor setback. Father had said to Chase, and if we press on through, we'll be right back in the race. So they gathered up some water and some hardtack too, but they didn't want to leave the wreck. Pollard said no. Peace and Joy said yes. So they all said, what the heck? As for just which way to sail, none of them could agree. But it was decided for the best not to sail to the west. The ultimate irony. Because there were there were cannibals in the west is what they were afraid of. Ironic, it's like the like, bar <laughs> <laughs> They tried to sail west, but the wind proved bad, so they drifted and said to the south. Soon things turned dire, they began to perspire, and their tongues shriveled up in their mouths. Only a minor setback, Pollard croaked to chase, and if we can just find an island, we'll be right back in the race. No sooner had the words escaped his mouth than they heard a weak land ho. There were smiles all around at the island they found, and they pulled the boats into a cove. In just a few days, it was no surprise when Pollard said, Seems to me that the food's run low, so I'll have to go. And they set back out to sea. Joy grew ill as a storm came up that couldn't be placated. He was hanging by a thread, and soon he was dead, and the boats got separated. Only a minor setback, Chase said to himself, as he and his crew nursed their deteriorating health. Now this is the point of the book in which things really began to go south for the crew of the Essex, both literally and metaphorically. On Chase's boat, their rations were cut to 1.5 ounces of hardtack a day, which of course was half of half of their original ration, which in the first place wasn't enough to sustain the life of another man. But it was much better than the situation on Hendrix's and Pollard's boats, where they had run out of food entirely. As they sat around and looked at each other on the hot sun, they began to dream of more imaginative ways to curb their hunger. The first man died and they jumped on him with much ferocity. They cut off his head and his feet and his hands and tossed them into the sea. 
Then they went for the liver and the heart, for you know they taste the best. We put it out of paws in a ravenous jaw, as greedily tore at the rest. By the time they were sighted by a whaling ship, there were but five men left. They were sucking on bones, spoke only in moans of dignity devoid and bereft. Only a miner set back, a crewman set to chase, and if we get back to Nantucket, we'll ride back in the rain.